Today we're looking at the Orders of the Sisters of Battle, so prepare your ebon chalices and bloody roses, as we're going to take a look at all of them. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where today we're going to be looking through each of the Orders of the Adeptus Auroritus, talking a little bit about their fluff and backstory, what they can do in game, and roughly how strong I think they are at the moment. If you're starting a sister's army, which order to play as is quite a big decision, as it can really incentivize you to use some units or build around different things in game. The sisters of battle are organized into six great orders militants, each one of them founded in honor of the six saints, who negotiated peace with the Adeptus Custodes in the Age of Apostasy, and renounced the heretic Gauge Vandire, bringing to an end the reign of blood. From there onwards, they were defenders of the Imperial Creed, staunchly spreading his faith across the stars and repelling the tides of heretics, witches, and Xenos from the Emperor's domain. Perhaps first and most prominent among the Orders is the Order of Our Martyred Lady, perhaps the largest and most widespread fighting force that the Sororitas have to offer. This Order were originally known as the Order of the Fiery Heart, followers of the Great Saint Catherine, shield bearer and second-in-command of Alicia Dominica, and was at the forefront of the insurmountable Wars of Faith to purge the Imperium of the heresy left by the Age of Apostasy. The Order is based on their primary convent of Ophelia Seven, one of the most hallowed worlds in the entire Imperium, and their fighting forces are large, balanced, flexible, and perhaps notoriously willing to sacrifice themselves for the greater good in memory of their fallen saint. In game, they're the only character with their own unique character, Junith Arita, who is a pretty powerful canoness, and she can grant four rerolls to a unit as well as putting some sisters in light cover nearby, never mind her powerful heavy flamers that she can fire from her hover pulpit. In game, the Order of Armata Lady gain extra miracle dice whenever one of their squads dies, so will likely have quite a lot more to play with over the course of the game, and if they ever have any squads that have been damaged but not destroyed, they will get plus one to their hit roll when they attack back. Their core tactics tend to incentivize multiple small units of infantry. Their stratagems also potentially quite helpful, giving you an all-game plus one to wound against a unit, provided that unit just destroyed a Armata Lady character. If they take out your warlord with something incredibly big and dangerous, then that could be a really nice debuff. Their trait shield bearer is a small defensive boost, minus one damage, and you get an automatic six for any miracle dice generated from that character. A bit passable if you ask me. But their relic is really quite fun, a 12 inch strength 9 and damage d6 plus 3 inferno pistol. It actually really seems like it could be a weapon that gets there in terms of the damage output needed. And if you roll perfectly, then in theory you could vaporize a dreadnought in a single shot from this thing. Overall, I'd say there's quite a lot going for the Order of Our Martyred Lady, though just maybe aren't quite so clearly focused around one strategy. I'd say they're fairly medium in strength, maybe a good choice for a very balanced sister's force, particularly one that's fairly infantry heavy. Moving on, we come to the Order of the Valorous Heart. Following their footsteps of their patron Saint Lucia, the Valorous Hearts are driven by the belief that they need to atone for their acts during the Age of Apostasy. Self-imposed hardship and penance is common among the sisters of this order, and many of their sanctuaries are carved out amid bleak, desolate environments, deep within the Ultimar Segmentum, viciously wrested from the hands of Xenos or traitors. When they make war, the sisters make great use of their ability to endure hardship, often forcing the foe into a gruelling war of attrition, severing supply lines, and cutting lines of retreat to lock the foe in place, where they aim to outlast them and gradually wear them down. To help with this strategy, they often field a great number of exorcists, and their drive of constant penance has often led to many more repenture amongst their ranks. In game, the Valorous Heart brings their legendary endurance to the tabletop. They get an extra plus one save against any AP-1 or AP-2 weapons, making their power armoured squads really quite hardy, and even their vehicles more resistant to things like missile launchers. On top of that, they also get a 5 plus feel no pain type save against mortal wounds, which does seem to be being more and more relevant with the more Ninth Codexes that come out. Certainly not a bad order for being extra resilient to psychic powers. Their stratagem for one command point allows them to ignore modifiers to hit. It has quite a number of uses, either firing at something in dense cover, maybe moving or shooting with a big unit of retributors, or even being particularly nice for a pincher in close combat where they'll be hitting on threes re-rolling rather than fours. Definitely a good general purpose one that could easily add up to a fair amount of damage. Their Warlord trait just gives them a 5 plus feel no pain type save outright, and they heal a wound every time they use an act of faith, basically a small durability buff there. And their Relic Casket gives them 3 inch aura of minus 1 toughness. If you could get that on a frontline character, then that could be actually really powerful with debuffing one enemy unit, and making them far easier to wipe out either at range or at close. 
Wounding Space Marines on threes with bolters sounds like a great idea, though you would have to expose your character a bit. If you're looking for a durable battle line, the Valorous Heart are hard to go wrong with. Having extra tough units is really handy in ninth for scoring those primaries, and anything that they can use their stratagem on, such as Repenture or Retributors, is just a bonus. In terms of raw order strength, I'd say they're a medium to strong order. Their durability and stratagem are useful, and their relic could be really powerful in the right circumstances. Moving on, we come to the Order of the Bloody Rose, the famously destructive close combat melee sisters. This order was founded in honour of Saint Mina, personal champion to Alicia Dominica, and are well known for descending into a holy battle rage once they're engaged, their close quarter charges being legendary. In battle, their entire combat doctrine revolves around this, either overwhelming or baiting the foe into close range engagements, following up by a few devastating charges to lay the foe to rest. In game, this translates to a massive melee boost on the charge, all of their units get an extra pip of AP and one extra attack each. Against heavily armoured targets, that could near double the damage output that you'd expect from your sisters in melee, and it combines really well with the melee focused Sacred Rites, the one that gives you exploding sixes to hit in combat, or the one that gives you plus one to advance and charge. Certainly any melee sisters units are going to be right at home here. Their stratagem, Tear Them Down, is another very powerful combat boost. It means that any sixes to hit in melee auto wound the enemy, really helpful with sisters relatively low strength, meaning that that could come up quite often. It's particularly brutal on units like Repenture when they're going after heavier targets such as vehicles. Their Warlord trait gives a fighty cannoness plus one attack and advance and charge, handy enough if she is pairing that with some sort of fighty relic as well. And one option for that is Beneficence the Relic Chainsword, a strength 5, AP minus 2, damage 1 chainsword with plus 3 attacks or even more extra attacks if she's got loads of enemy models up close. Overall, with all these stacking melee buffs, I think that it makes Bloody Rose one of the strongest, if not the strongest, sisters order, and they combine really well with units like Repenture, Sacrosants, or Zephyrim, all of which are fairly threatening in their own right, but with the order conviction and potentially the stratagem as well, they get to a whole next level of murderousness. You could potentially even go for a mixed order strategy where you have the melee units in Bloody Rose and then the shooting ones in something else. Moving on, we come to the Order of the Argent Shroud, and this order's mantra is Deeds Not Words. The sisters within their sanctuaries rarely ever speaking unless absolutely necessary, and they prefer to show their faith to the Emperor through action alone and purging enemies in the Emperor's name. Their patron saint is Saint Silvana, one of the first to die of Elysia Dominica's holy group of six, poisoned by a death cult assassin in the aftermath of Van Dyer's fall. The silvery shroud that she was cloaked with became the symbol of the order. In battle, the forces of the Argent Shroud favour a very direct approach, generally just marching boldly into the direst of conflicts, rarely pausing to formulate any kind of grand strategy, or even bother to communicate with other Imperial forces. They have often found themselves frustrating allies to fight alongside, but the direct devastating blow that they provide to the enemy is often enough to make up for this. In battle, they're famously swift-moving and relentless, with a reputation for lightning assaults and a great number of rhino-mounted dominions in their ranks. In game, this fighting style allows them to counter stationary for shooting, even if they've advanced, which means for any of their shooting units, you may as well advance every turn. It means that most of their sisters will be moving 9 or 10 inches around the board most turns, hopefully allowing you to get the enemy right where you need to, and you can do the same with your vehicles. On top of that, you also get to re-roll one hit or wound roll per attack, making them quite good with any sort of multiple small units bearing heavy weapons. Between those two buffs, it makes them incredibly good with multi-melters, and either Retributors or multiple small unit sister squads with multi-melters both will have a lot of value here. Their stratagem, Faith as Our Shield, gives them a 4 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds, an enormous durability buff if you're about to have a unit that's going to be ravaged by smite. Their Warlord trait, Selfless Heroism, gives them a 6 inch heroic intervention and fight first. Not too bad as a defensive one, but I think that's usually going to get passed up for other options as probably is their Quicksilver Veil, a plus 3 inch move and minus 1 to hit for the character. Overall, in raw strength, I'd say they're kind of medium. They do help out certain units a lot, but a lot of things aren't really going to care all that much. Again, maybe like the Bloody Rose, they could be good for a small detachment, if you want to bring a few foot squads of multi-melters. I think the lore behind them is really quite cool though. Got to love the idea of a whole load of silver-clad sisters just marching relentlessly into battle, not even stopping to communicate with their allies in their haste to purge the Emperor's foes. The Order of the Ebon Chalice is a highly elite order, and their patron saint is Saint Alicia Dominica herself, leader of the Daughters of the Emperor, who were convinced of his heresy by the Adeptus Custodes, 
and beheaded the tyrant Van Dyer himself, before leading her sisters to become the Sisters of Battle and reform the Imperium through the Wars of Faith. Her successors today, the Ebon Chalice, are highly elite, only accepting the very best of the aspirants, and many of these do not even make it through their trials. They operate around Holy Terror itself, keeping the Segmentum Solar free from incursion, and when they make war, they boast a great number of Celestians, due to their elite nature, and have a certain preference for flame weapons, which may have stemmed from their Order's fiery iconography. In-game, the Ebon Chalice were heavily rewritten in the later Sisters Codex, and now rather than choosing one or rolling for two sacred rites, they now get to choose two of their own. This is pretty powerful, as it means that you could have both the melee ones if you wanted, plus one to charge and exploding sixes, or if you happen to be fighting a lot of psychers, you could get that auto-deny on a five plus one to boost the standard Sisters' Shield of Faith. On top of that, they can get good value out of their Miracle Dice, when you do an act of faith, if you discard an extra miracle dice, then you can make one of them a 6. Certainly handy if you've got a big damage roll that really needs to get maximal impact, or if you need to guarantee a charge with a powerful melee unit like Sacrosance or Repenture. A few 6s certainly might be a bit more valuable than a bunch of miracle dice at lower levels. Their stratagem is Cleansing Flames for 1 command point, they get plus 4 inches to their flamer ranges, and each wound of a 4 plus causes a mortal wound to a maximum of 3. Got a cheap one command point for an extra three mortal wounds there, and it should be pretty reliable to get those off if you have two or three flamers in the unit. Maybe not bad to have an extra damage increase in addition to the now universal one that all sisters can use to make all flamer weapons max shot. Their trait, Terrible Knowledge, is a good one. Your first miracle dice is guaranteed to be a six, and on a five plus you regenerate command points whenever you happen to spend a stratagem. If you're playing Ebon Chalice, I don't think it makes any sense not to have this on the board. Two very helpful buffs, easily worth a command point if you want to buy it in. Finally, their relic is maybe a bit niche, but quite fun. It's a Sniping Condemner Bolter. The crossbow stake mode of it gets Strength 4, AP-2, and Damage 2, but if it even hits the Psyker, never mind if it wounds, they automatically suffer 3 mortal wounds. Really powerful to have something that has the potential just to flat out kill a Space Marine Librarian or Chaos Sorcerer in just one shot. Obviously how good it is, though, depends on how many Psykers you're likely to face. In general, between their sacred rites and their sixes for miracle dice mean that they're quite a generalist order, most strategies can work quite well. Maybe particularly strong with any units with a bunch of flame weapons, or any melee units to make use of both sacred rites. Overall, I would say that they're a strong order. Sacred rite manipulation seems useful, their wall of trace is very nice, and the miracle dice trick is handy too. Finally, for the big six sisters orders, we have the Order of the Sacred Rose, a calm and serene order and perhaps take devotion and piety to a whole extra level, even compared with the other Sister of Battle orders. They clad themselves in distinctive white power armour, and they believe themselves to be divine conduits of the Emperor's will. Every victory comes from faith and faith alone, material matters are deemed to be highly irrelevant. When they make war, the Sacred Rose have a graceful and unhorrid advance, raising their voices in a great hymn to the Emperor, punctuated only by the firepower of their Holy Trinity, Bolt, Flame and Melter weapons. The Order of the Sacred Rose is often accompanied by an abnormally high following of Imperial cult. Priests, Crusaders, and many other Ecclesiarchy formations find themselves drawn to their piety. In-game, this ultimate Imperial faith allows them to auto-pass any combat attrition roles, so leadership shouldn't be much of an issue, and the Emperor's blessings rain down upon them, as every time they use a Miracle Dice, you have a 4 plus chance to get a new one. It means they should be able to be a bit more liberal with Miracle Dice, and can potentially get a lot more value out of any mechanics that generate more. Their stratagem is the Emperor's Judgment, it gives them exploding sixes to hit at range with weapons, as will usually amount to around a 25% increase in damage for a shooting unit. Not at all bad if it's a really powerful unit that's been buffed up by other characters. Their Warlord of Trait allows her to use her Miracle Dice as sixes, even if they aren't, so could have some Canonesses making some very long charges and things and also allows nearby sisters to fall back and shoot, which they can do with a stratagem anyway, but it's still quite nice to have at the centre of a battle line. Finally, their relic is a brazier of holy fire that doesn't just burn out after one shot, you can keep up with its mortal wound output for several turns if the canoness survives, essentially giving her a kind of mini spite at 12 inches. In general, the sacred rows seem to be a little bit more range focused than melee, and will be particularly handy with anything that makes good use of miracle dice, Though honestly, I think what they have to offer is maybe just a tiny bit lacklustre compared with some of the other orders. Extra Miracle Dice are great, but it does seem to be the only real big thing that they have going for them. Still though, if you want the ultimate example of Imperial Faith, 
and some striking white clad power armour, then the Sacred Rose might be for you. Finally, while the Big Six Orders may be the most widely known, there are also many Orders Minoris out there throughout the galaxy, either offshoots of the original Orders or entirely new foundings. Some examples are the Order of the Thorn, who are known to descend into a holy battle rage at the start of blood, their pale armour showcasing the spilled gore of their enemies with ease, and the Order of the Glowing Chalice, descendants from the Ebon Chalice Order, whose signature move is to make war when dawn rises over a war-torn world, charging forward, feeling the light of Holy Soul at their backs. When you're using some of these lesser orders, you get to pick two convictions from a great big list. There's a whole ton of different choices, and while they are quite flexible, it does mean that you don't get the other benefits, things like a Warlord trait, Relic, and Stratagem. There's a couple of small melee buffs, plus one to hit in melee, or plus one AP in melee, though unfortunately those two can't be stacked. One half of the Order of the Argent Shroud, where you can re-roll a single hit roll or wound roll per unit, not a bad damage increase, and maybe perhaps one of the very most interesting is one that makes multi weapons always count as in half range up to 18 inches. It means that things like Dominions with standard melter guns can be incredibly devastating, always getting the D6 plus 2 damage as standard. In general, as the rules stand at the moment, I can't see these massively competing with the core orders, though they could certainly give you a different playing experience if you wanted to try them out, and potentially they could make a very powerful specialised melted detachment, combining that always in half range thing with that single re-roll to hit or wound. It certainly sounds like it'd be bad news for enemy tanks. So that brings us to the end of our tour through the sisters' orders. Let me know which one is your favourite and why down in the comments below, and perhaps which ones you think are going to be strongest in tournament lists from the new codex. If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like this, including hopefully plenty more sisters of battle content, feel free to subscribe to Orspets Tactics, where we'll certainly keep the 40k related videos coming regularly. If you have been enjoying a lot of videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Orspets Tactics has a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description. Making all this content does take a fair amount of time, so if you are enjoying regularly, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, being able to see certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry to the regular prize giveaways, with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.